Travel consideration provided by... Sometimes your work shirt needs to be for more than just work. Like when it needs to be a big, soft shoulder to cry on. Which is why Downy does more to make clothes softer, fresher, and better. Downy, breathe life into your laundry. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein. 30 grams protein, 1 gram sugar, 25 vitamins and minerals, and a new fiber blend with a prebiotic. Tomorrow on E.T., Cedric the Entertainer, Tony Braxton, exclusive details behind their new collab. This was just a beautiful opportunity to come together. Tony will sing beautiful love songs. I'll dance interpretively. <laughs> I did not even realize Cedric was in that interview. All right, before we go, Oprah Winfrey appeared on Gail King and Charles. Happening now. A 21-year-old college student from New Braunfels was reported missing nearly three weeks ago. Coming up, we speak to his parents who are not only holding out hope, but now offering a reward for a safe return. Some disturbing allegations have come out involving a teacher at this local school. I'll tell you why police say his arrest may be only the beginning in this case. Watching for a thunderstorm development over the next several hours. All of the latest feature casts talk about where they should form first, then where they're going to move, and our chances for severe weather. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, still no sign of a 21-year-old New Braunfels native gone for nearly three weeks. Search efforts for the Texas A&M Corpus Christi student Caleb Harris have had no luck. And his parents tell our John Paul Barajas they're not giving up hope. And now they're even offering an incentive for others to bring him home. A lot of it's speculation, but um, he, he was either taken or... He, you know, he, he was outside and saw something he shouldn't have seen. Uh, we just don't know. Lots of questions surround the disappearance of 21-year-old Caleb Harris. Caleb's dad, Randy, says his son was reported missing March 4th in Corpus Christi after his college roommate said they couldn't find him. His wallet was left, his keys were left, his shoes were left, he was barefooted, um, truck was locked. He'd taken the dog out for a walk. The dog made it back to the apartment but he did not. Corpus Christi police say they have searched hundreds of acres surrounding the 21-year-old's apartment complex on the 1900 block of Annis Jocelyn Drive, checked surrounding apartments and interviewed his roommates, friends, and family, but have still had no luck solving his disappearance. As we approach three weeks, is there any lost hope that you will be reunited again? Not at all, not at all. We're, we're confident, we're confident in the authorities and the amount of people and volunteers that we have that Somebody's, somebody knows something, and that's what we're looking for. His parents describe Caleb as a fun-loving person who had many talents, from fishing to football, with aspirations of getting an environmental science degree and plans of becoming a game warden. If there's something you could say to him right now, what would it be? Um, that we love him and that he um, needs to do everything he can do to fight to get out of the situation he's in and come home. And mom and dad are also trying to find ways of getting their son home now offering a $25,000 reward for information for a safe return. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Corpus Christi police have been in contact with the FBI, U.S. Marshals, Texas Rangers, San Antonio, and New Braunfels police, but they ask if you know anything to please contact them at 361-886-2840. We also have that information on our website, ksat.com. A border break in El Paso creating a wild scene this morning. This is video from the scene that shows hundreds of migrants pressing a border wall of a razor fence wire and then breaking through it. Border troops were put to the ground, knocked to the ground. Multiple news outlets reporting that the men were reportedly reacting to the processing procedure where women and children were apparently separated out first. The crowd part of what is described as a spring surge of migrants who are seeking asylum in the U.S. Two kids taking on police gunfire while allegedly stealing a car in Live Oak. Police say that it all started early this morning when an officer spotted a suspicious car. They say the officer tried to pull that car over, but it didn't stop. The officer got out of his unit, but says the driver of the other car tried to hit him. That's when the officer fired shots, hitting the driver. A neighbor says she heard the gunfire and was shocked to learn that the people inside that car were minors. Kind of 
puts into perspective what these young kids are doing with their time nowadays. And so, very alarming, especially for family members. Investigators say they did recover a handgun from that vehicle. Both kids inside the stolen car were treated for their injuries. Sheriff's police trying to figure out just how big of a case they have on their hands. At the root of the case, a sex-related charge against a fourth-grade teacher accused of inappropriate contact with the student. Katrina Weber reports police believe they have one victim, but they're wondering if there are others, too. In clothes he could have worn to a schoolhouse, 42-year-old Gabriel Cantu was booked into a jailhouse by Shirts police this morning. They arrested Cantu in connection with what a student at Shirts Elementary told them a little more than a week ago. A police report says the girl made an outcry, which led to the fourth grade teacher being charged with indecency with a child. They would not discuss details, but say she told them it happened in January of last year. No, I didn't know nothing about this. Virginia McQueen was in the dark about it as she picked up her kindergartner for lunch. One other parent told me she was there for more information on what she read in an email from the Shirts Cibolo Universal City School District. A spokesperson for the district says that they have notified only certain parents at the school, those most closely affected, but the word has spread to many others and some tell us that they also are worried. I don't know what to say, like it's, I'm scared about my, my, my daughter. According to the school district, though, Cantu, who had taught there since last year, is gone for good. A news release says he was immediately placed on leave and won't be allowed back. Police, meanwhile, encourage parents to talk to their children and urge any potential victims to come forward. Yeah, I always talk to her. Like, and she, the good thing is she come back home and tell me what happened every day. McQueen says she'll be keeping her ears and eyes open. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. One of two suspects arrested in yesterday's armored truck robbery. The arrest, the result of social media posts bragging about his newfound wealth. SAPD investigators say 28-year-old DeAndre Nelson was one of the suspects who robbed an armored truck crew on Austin Highway near Harry, Wurz Harry Wurzbach yesterday morning. The crew has allegedly been making the rounds in that area, and police say that when the truck stopped, the suspects pulled up behind it, got out, and robbed the employees at gunpoint, telling them to get to their knees and face the ground. No one was hurt. Police say the suspects got away with an unknown amount of money, but investigators were able to track down Nelson. They say he was bragging on social media that he was going to a casino to spend a lot of money. His bond set at $75,000. Police are still, by the way, looking for that other suspect. Time now to get a quick look at what's in store for us in today's Know My Neighborhood series. This month, Steve, Myra, and Adam are live in the Northern Hills, Valencia area. Hi, guys. Guys, what's going on? Yeah, it, I mean, it's a beautiful day out here, Ursula. After the rains left, we've got a nice cool breeze. I'm jealous that I can't play golf, but you know what? This is a neighborhood that's synonymous with this golf course behind us, Northern Hills Golf Course. And right across the street is the Valencia neighborhood. So they share a lot of the same concerns and a lot of the same amenities. Yeah, this is something they're very proud of. Also, their senior center, unlike anyone I have ever seen before. It's incredible. There's also concerns, though, with this neighborhood. It's one that typically most neighbors are older. They want to see more younger families move here. They want to see more people get involved. So that's why the title of this episode is Getting Involved. Take a look. Everything is close by. I don't want to live downtown San Antonio. I want to live out in the outskirts, and this is just right. If you look at a big map of the city, look for the green spaces. This is one of those big green spaces. And if you want a place to raise a family that's safe and nice, this is a great neighborhood to be in. Although we don't have a lot of children here right now, I think we're going to see more growth. This disregard for other people's property, I don't like that. Find something else to do with your time. We uh, do have younger kids in the neighborhood. I get anxious when cars are driving down our road. And I know the cops are 
very busy, but they do not come through here and patrol very often. We put on a lot of fun events, you know, for the community, and we just don't often have the turnout that I think we could have. We have a fabulous senior center. I come every day of the week. I exercise three days a week over there, and then I play rummy cube five days a week. For us to have this here, to live here with this, it's a well-kept secret. Outside of that, though, we don't we don't have a whole lot. Sometimes we'll have to drive a little bit further to go to some of the other parks. Family and community is what relationships are what life is about. What life is all about. By the way, we showed you the Northern Hills Golf Course. It's doing great. What isn't doing so great, this is the Northern Hills Pool, or was the Northern Hills Pool. They aren't having enough people use it, so they're not opening it. It hasn't been open for several years now, and that is one of the issues and why we are calling this episode Getting Involved. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting problem because some of those younger families that are here say they can't justify paying the fees for the association because there aren't amenities but then there aren't amenities because people aren't volunteering that fee. So we're going to talk about that so much more in this neighborhood, what we always call the good, the bad, the frustrating. So join us at 6 o'clock for that. And, of course, we have the one and only Adam Kasky out here who we are trying to keep off the greens. Yeah. By the way, if you want to join us live on the 19th hole, that's where we're going to be inside the uh, golf course clubhouse. You're more than welcome. I've got a few thermometers on me, too. So yeah. it is Thermometer yeah, Thursday. Is. So if somebody in the neighborhood swings by, you may just get first dibs, honestly, at the 19th hole here. It's comfortable outside now, especially when the clouds cover up the sun. It, temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Take a look at our weather watchers, especially the rainfall accumulations. Leon Springs, 500 of an inch. Myco, Dean's Backyard, 500 of an inch. But let's go to Lavernia, Roger's Backyard, three inches. He was one of the lucky exceptions out there. We had some heavier downpour south and east of downtown San Antonio, and that's where we had some of the higher accumulations. Roger, maybe you might want to think about getting a Mega Millions or Powerball ticket. Uh, well, let's take a look at Authority Radar right now. Our focus has shifted to new development. Between the city of Medina and Comfort, we have a little brief thunderstorm or heavy downpour that's moving eastward. More development possible later tonight. We'll time that out for you and talk about when the sky clears and temperatures warm up in just a bit. Thank you so much, Adam. And of course, you can watch today's Know My Neighborhood starting at 6 o'clock right here on KSAT 12 YouTube or KSAT Plus or any way you stream. At this very moment, you can make a huge difference in the lives of hundreds of kids in our community by giving back. You're looking at a phone bank. We want you to call 210-351-1363. The Boys and Girls Club has been manning these phones since early this morning, and they need your help. The Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio is serving close to 3,300 kids in our community every year, but in the summertime, they really need some help because they've got a bunch of kids with nothing to do and the clubs provide a safe and fun place for them to build friendships, play sports, games, and stay out of trouble. They can also explore their interests. They even learn STEM activities, art, as well as cooking. But the nonprofit needs you to invest in our youth. I grew up at the Calderon site, and uh, my experience there was, was everything. It taught me how to be me and express who I want to be today. Um, growing up there, I learned basketball. I was taught basketball, and um, it's where I found my passion for sports. And growing up, I was able to play sports and go to college for free through a college uh, basketball scholarship. We have programming that's focused on academic success, good character and citizenship, and healthy lifestyles. As a nonprofit, we really rely on the generosity of the community. Now you still have time to make a donation. This is uh, phone bank is going to stay open until seven o'clock tonight. Two one zero three five one thirteen sixty three. You can make a donation, and whatever you donate is going to make an impact because, as we said, the kids are going to be getting out of school and they need help to provide all these programs. Two one zero three five one thirteen sixty three. Boys and Girls Club volunteers are answering the phones and taking donations until seven o'clock tonight.
We want to take you out live. There has been a lot of trouble on the roads today. This is 281 at 410, and you can just see it's slow going. The roads do not appear to be wet any longer uh, at this location. The sun actually came out and dried things up for a few hours, but more rain is on the way. So just keep that in mind if you're heading out. Up next, water, essential for staying healthy, but a lot of us aren't sure how much water we need to be drinking. The answer may not be as much as you think. We'll have that plus what else you could drink instead of water to stay hydrated. Good old water is the go-to drink for a lot of people, and that's a good thing because your body needs it to function its best. But how much water do you really need? 12 on your size, Marilyn Moore says the answer might surprise you. Water is Samantha Reyes's drink of choice. If I'm tired, I drink water. Um, if I'm hungry, I drink water. And definitely if I'm trying to lose weight. Water is essential to good health. And now that these big stainless steel cups are popular, many people are drinking more of it. But how much water do you actually need to stay properly hydrated? There's not a one-size-fits-all answer. It depends on body size, physical activity, even gender. Consumer Reports found most men need about 15 and a half cups of fluids a day. Women, about 11 and a third cups. Can't drink that much? Good news, water isn't the only way to stay hydrated. Nearly everything we eat has water. Things like smoothies, soups, coffee, tea, they all supply fluid. And fruits and vegetables even count towards your fluid requirement. For example, one small watermelon wedge has seven ounces of water, nearly a full glass. Other hydrating fruits and veggies include cantaloupe, peaches, and cucumber. What about sports and other drinks that claim to be ultra hydrating? If you're exercising for longer than an hour, experts say you could benefit from the electrolytes. Otherwise, you probably don't need them. No, I'd rather save my sugar for other drinks or desserts. I'll just stick to water for hydration. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. We're going to take a look outside with live cam. Lots of clouds back out. There are a few little spots of sunshine out there, Adam. Yeah, a little bit of sunshine, and that sunshine is helping to destabilize the atmosphere a bit, especially west of San Antonio, where we've had a few more hours of sunshine, and that's where we've had some of the first storms develop. I want to get to our weather headlines first and foremost. A few isolated storms this evening. Tomorrow, we start the day with areas of fog, and then it turns sunny. And as we get into the weekend, seasonable conditions as we go on into Palm Sunday and Humidity, it rises a little bit. That could give us some fog Friday morning on Palm Sunday. Okay, let's go full screen so you can see this better and we'll get right to the radar. And I wanna show you the activity and the action that's off to the northwest of town being detected by authority radar. And you see this one downpour, really heavy rainfall moving through Camp Verde, even some lightning and thunder. So it is lit up a little bit. That's headed to the east. It's very slowly and having a hard time really um, pushing eastward very quickly and efficiently, but you can expect that in I-10 corridor in Kendall County here momentarily. Okay, here's the big picture. Most of the action, like we were talking about, closer to Houston and even the Gulf Coast, but we mentioned earlier, Lavernia had about three, three inches of rain. Big upper level system, we're still getting some energy from it through midnight tonight. We could have a few isolated pop-up storms through that time frame. There's only a 30% chance. So not everybody's going to get it. Most of us will be dry. However, wherever those storms decide to pop up, they could become strong to severe. So that's what we're watching with localized hail and a localized wind gust up to 60 miles per hour possible within any thunderstorm that happens to develop. So we'll be watching that closely and we'll be on KSAT 12 and especially the KSAT Weather Authority app with the latest. Tomorrow morning, we start the day 56, but foggy. All this moisture from the rain, it's going to lead to some fog to start the day. Otherwise, a sunny Friday. 82 degrees, the high temperature, and not overly humid. We'll make it to 83, Stinson on the south side, 79, Bernie and Bulverde. Uvalde making it to 87 tomorrow afternoon. So notice the temperatures are on the upswing, considering we were stuck in the 60s for the past few days. Now we're back to 80 degrees tomorrow and into the 80s, especially west of town. 
Seven day forecast mornings, mostly in the fifties all the way through Sunday and afternoons this weekend in the seventies, a mixture of sun and clouds, little bit of activity possible Monday into Tuesday. Some isolated storms could pop up. Still a lot of uncertainty with that, but overall there's going to be a brief period of time then when the weather pattern becomes more active. At six o'clock, we'll go over how much rain fell and where. Judging by the ground here at Northern Hills, not a whole lot on the course here. They'll have to be using their sprinklers. Back to you. Thank you, Adam. I was actually paying a lot of attention to the the people putting behind him, they're pretty good. They all made their putts. Yeah, I want to get in on that. That, yeah. that sounds fun. <laughs> but a lot going on on the hardwood, too, yes. because it's that time of year. Um, March Madness begins today, and the off season though, for the Spurs is coming up. Rookie Victor Wembanyama shared his plans to collaborate with the front office come time for the off season. And this is what it looks like when you have spring football practice in the morning and a date with the mayor at noon. It was a busy day for UTSA after the break. I don't just because I'm so terrified of the NCAA rules. I don't want anybody getting me for gambling, so I don't even fill one out. <laughs> don't even talk about it. March Madness has begun, but Jeff Trailer won't be taking any chances with bracket picks. It was a busy day for UTSA football in big board sports. The Spurs held a productive practice this morning ahead of tomorrow night's game against the Memphis Grizzlies. When the doors opened for media, we witnessed head coach Greg Popovich working with rookie Victor Wembanyama on positioning, movement, and things of that nature. Afterwards, Wembanyama talked about getting in on conversations this offseason as it relates to the future of the franchise. As much as my role as a, as a leader and as a player for the future is important, so... I, I stay on my I stay on my side, but it's you know I'm sure I'm sure also about the draft they're gonna you know ask me questions about the French the French pl prospects we got right now coming up. So it's uh, you know as, as before everybody does their job, but I'm ready to to be involved and to collaborate and give and help in any way I can help. That's really cool to hear. The Spurs and Grizzlies tip off at seven tomorrow at the Frost. Well, the UTSA football team wrapped up another spring football practice this afternoon. This is week two, and this Saturday the program will hold its first scrimmage. The spring is where new leadership within the roster can emerge. And speaking of, the Roadrunners graduated 17 seniors, which marks the end of the Frank Harris era and the group that helped bring the program to new heights. The city of San Antonio recognized the 2023 seniors and head coach Jeff Trailer for their excellent run. Uh, you know, it means a lot, um, you know, just all the hard work that I put in uh, and getting recognized, you know, from, you know, the mayor and uh, city manager and all that kind of means a lot, you know, especially where I grew up at. Um, just a testament to, you know, my hard work, um, dedication and ultimately to my teammates and, and all the stuff that, we, that we've been through. So cool. All right, quick mention, UTSA women's basketball opens up the WNIT bracket by hosting Northern Colorado at home tonight. We'll be right back. Here's another chance for you to make a difference. Show you care about the youth of our city. The Boys and Girls Club needs you to call right now. 210-351-1363. Call now. World News is next. <laughs> 